Hi everyone, welcome to a brand new video. In today's video, we are going to show you how to make a drop down cell or drop down list that updates its values whenever you add new items to your list. So let's first make our basic drop down. So I'm going to put my list of values here at uh, starting at cell F1. And I'm going to put sort of like a list of expenses. If you look at the table that I have here, I have an expense type column and amount. So I want drop down containing different expense types. So I'll start, let's say different expenses like insurance. Let's say we also want transportation expense. We also have a representation expense. Take note that I am using the same worksheet as the source list, but you can also use another worksheet or another tab for your list of data. However, using another tab for your list of data is only applicable from Excel 2010 onwards. If you are using Excel 2007 or earlier, then you must use the same worksheet as your source of data as well. So if that is the case, then you just have to hide your um, list of values so that they don't sort of like cram your worksheet. So the basic drop down is you have to highlight the cells from A2 to A9 and then go to data. And then under data, you have to go to data validation. So under data validation, we allow, and then we choose list. So anytime that you are going to make a list or a drop down list in your uh, tracker or in your Excel worksheet, you have to go to data validation and choose list in the allow field. And then for the source, you have to highlight the cells F1 to F3 in my case here and click OK. So here you have your drop down items under column A. Okay. Now, if you want, you can actually add more values to your list, but your drop down will not pick it up automatically. So the manual way is for us to highlight it again or the cells again then go to data data validation once more and update the cells in order to include the new items in our list some people they tend to highlight more so that in case they add more items to the list then our drop down will automatically pick it up because in the first place it's already highlighted more than what we need. Click OK. Now that will work. So if you have new items in our list, then that drop down will pick it up. However, you will have this empty items in your drop down and they don't look nice. So we want to do something else so people will not be choosing blank from the drop down. So to do this, we have to use the function offset. Now, we will discuss offset in detail in a separate video. Probably I will put the link in the chat for that. But for now, let's just go with offset and I will give you sort of like an overview on how it works as we create the solution for this situation. Now we're going to do something different. We need a notepad okay, in this kind of problem because we need to write the formula in Notepad. And then once it is in Notepad, we will copy the formula in a pop-up that we will have later. Because remember, when you have a pop-up, then you're not really uh, allowed to copy some texts from the worksheet itself. So you have to use another program where you will write your formula. So let's start. As any formula, we will start with the equal sign and then use offset. Offset has five arguments and we will need to utilize all of them for this scenario. The first one is our starting cell. 
what cell should the offset start getting data from? So we have here cell F1. And I hope you noticed how I placed the dollar sign because I want to make sure that even if I cascade the formula to A2, A3, A4, A5, remember where the dropdowns will be, my offset function will always start at cell F1. Now, the next two arguments of offset sort of like works like coordinates. They're like your y and x axis. You have to send offset to uh, move the cursor somewhere else. And it, you give it like a numbers wherein it will move based on those coordinates. So for this one, we will tell offset not to move because we are already at the right position. We are already at cell F1. So for that, we will put 0, 0 as the coordinates that we will send offset. Remember, offset, the word itself is uh, connotes movement, right? You offset something, you move something. So we're going to move it nowhere, just 0, 0. Now, the last two arguments correspond to how many cells are going to be highlighted or included by the offset function. The first of this last two would be the number of rows or the height of our data. So in this case, I have to make something dynamic. I cannot put five here for my five items because that will make it fixed to these five cells. So I will use count A, count A or count anything. So if I have count A, then I will indicate what column or what uh, field or cells am I going to count? So here, I have column F. And again, I have to put dollar signs because I need it fixed under that column. So for those who are not familiar, count A counts anything or counts all values or items in that field or in that column. So we are getting five here. And this is actually the reason why once we have this um, formula in our dropdown, that dropdown will update because of this. This is the very solution to the problem. Once we add new values under column F, count A will change. It will become six, it will become seven, making our dropdown dynamic. Now we still have one more argument for offset and that would be the number one. We're actually forced to use one in this scenario. The last argument of offset connotes how many columns are we supposed to uh, include in our range of cells. And since we're going to make a drop down, drop downs only require or only needs one column of data. So there's nothing else to put here but one. Okay, so there's our formula. And now we are ready to update our drop down. So we will highlight again the cells, go to data, data validation, and, and then instead of using the fixed cells, we will highlight our formula and paste okay, our formula from Notepad. So now, instead of having a fixed range of cells for our list, we're relying on the answer of offset okay, for the drop-down values. So click OK. And no errors there. If there's an error in your formula, then it will actually uh, prompt you that there's something wrong. So make sure you update your formula in the notepad and then update your formula in your data validation list. And let's see, so we have our drop down here. And let's say that we have new item in our list. Let's say I'm going to add, um, I don't know, let's have meals maybe. And you will see that we now have meals in our drop down. And you can keep adding more okay, to this and your drop-down will update with the new item. So there's the process on how to create updating list 
okay, in a drop down. I hope you like this video and if you do, please uh, really appreciate uh, that uh, you like or comment or subscribe to our channel. It really helps us okay, create more contents for you. If you have any questions, feel free to use the comment section. If you have any questions about Excel at all, feel free to chat in the comment so that we know what to um, feature next in our channel. For now, that's it and keep safe. See you in the next video.